Right now, the United States government is what I would call almost pro-death. I mean, we live in a very uh, religious culture. We live in a in an area in a country that um, essentially uh, d doesn't mind if we die because that's what their religion says. We need a, a a kind of a culture that is wanting everyone to live indefinitely. We want a culture that insists that an indefinite lifespan is a universal right. So my Transhumanist Bill of Rights has essentially created this framework so that the American government can take up a legal framework and start putting science, resources, and technology towards all of us not dying, all of us living indefinitely. Right now, there's nothing like that in the United States, United States government. The very first thing we're doing with the Transhumanist Bill of Rights is establishing that aging is a disease. Right now, we don't look at aging as a disease, but we should look at as a aging as a disease because in about 20 years when we've conquered aging, uh, just like we're going to conquer cancer and Alzheimer's, you're going to look back and say, wow, aging really was a disease. You really believe in 20 years we could conquer aging? Well, 20 years is pretty optimistic. And of course, I'm a futurist, so I'm typically saying very optimistic things. But I have no doubt within 35 years we will conquer aging. Um, we've already had success in experiments with mice in reversing um, aging in reversing uh, the kind of the tissue damage that comes from aging in certain kinds of organs. It's just a matter of now putting on human trials. So we're a lot closer than people realize when it comes to these things. And you have to understand, it's not just aging we have to reverse. It's also kind of this idea of conquering death. We can replace organs. For example, a third of everybody you know will die from heart failure. So if we can figure out a way to create a artificial heart, and they have some already, then we will be able to stop heart failure. I mean, this is a real great way to have a 30% of the you know, population live a lot longer. So it's not only stopping aging, it's also sort of replacing the body with parts, synthetic parts generally, that are a lot better for living indefinite lifespans. Another part of your platform that many people might find a bit unusual lay the groundwork for rights for other future advanced sapient beings like conscious robots and cyborgs. Some experts believe we're only 10 years away from creating an artificial intelligence that is as, as intelligent as you and I. So what do you, what do you say to a machine that has a, a consciousness that's as smart as us? Well, that machine needs rights. That machine needs some type of protection. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a living entity at that point if it's as intelligent as us, and it recognizes that it's intelligent. So the Transhumanist Bill of Rights and what we're trying to advocate for is in as little as 10 years, eh, 15 or 20 years if you want to be more technical, there are going to be entities living on planet Earth that probably will need rights, will need to protect them. And the same thing, some people want to marry robots. Some people want... Um, you know, robots to be nannies for their children. Well, what if those robots have feelings? We're already, we're already teaching robots to feel pain. Well, how much pain can we give to a robot? If a robot starts saying, this hurts too much, please stop it. When should human beings stop it? We're entering an entire brand new civil rights age. And all these different types of sapient beings, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's cyborgs, whether whatever it is, we need to be able to protect them. Artificial intelligence, do you support it or do you have some fears of it? I have lots of fears of artificial intelligence. In fact, I would consider it probably the single most dangerous thing on the horizon in the next 10 to 15 years. I'm one that does not advocate for just letting artificial intelligence completely run and do whatever it wants. I see no reason for the human species to bring another entity that is potentially a, a thousand times smarter than us very soon onto planet Earth. However, what I really advocate for is merging human beings with artificial intelligence. We have a lot of neurotechnology, our ability to connect to machines, our ability to use uh, algorithms and telepathy into machines now. That's the way to let artificial intelligence um, uh, kind of be created. You also predict that technology is going to have a huge impact on the way campaigns are run. We're going to be seeing drones deliver bumper stickers and, and carry banners. So it'll say something like, vote for Zoltan. And um, we're also going to have driverless campaign buses. So somebody really wealthy like Trump might buy uh, 150 campaign buses and just put Trump on the side and let it roam around the freeways with nobody inside as advertisement. I think another one is the holographic imaging. We're coming to an age when we now have holographic imagery. You don't need to be in physically in form in order to campaign. You can show up on stage in front of 5,000 people and campaign just from your living room as long as you have the right technology. These are some of the things that you're going to already see definitely in 2020.
If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.